uh, also start the, Elizabeth, can you turn on the annotations? Thanks for me. So welcome everybody to the chaos to do working group focusing on metrics kind of name, <laughs> however it strings together. It's great to have you all here uh, today. So the minutes are in the chat. If other people join in, could somebody just drop the minutes in the chat for the new folks that um, arrive? All right, so um, we have a number of things on the agenda today. Um, so first, I'd, I'd like to spend maybe a few minutes kind of responding to the conversations that we had in uh, prior meetings where we're, you know, kind of talking about ways to kind of identify that value proposition that can be used by OSPOs. And one of the things that, that I was kind of taking away from that was perhaps some development of metrics models that could help kind of in that, in that um, conversation. So from this group, we took the conversation back to uh, our metrics model meeting, which was last week, uh, to really talk openly about uh, different ways to think about the value proposition that's in OSPOs, again, coming from our conversation two weeks ago. Um, so I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just share um, three metrics models that we have in front of us here and kind of get your reaction to them. And if you think these are helpful or not helpful at all, there's gonna be some overlap between them. Um, so just open discussion. You, you can also just say these are horrible. <laughs> they don't work at all. all. All comments are good comments and we can go from there. So um, one of the ones that we had talked about in that meeting was something called uh, project adoption or adoption counts. Um, and so the way that we structure the metrics models is a really quick overview of why this metric model would matter. We specify, and you can click on a link if you just want to see it, we also specify uh, what we call user stories, which are the kind of the, um, you know, like those profiles of people who would perhaps benefit from this metric model, and then metrics that are in that model itself. All right, so I'll give you a second just to take a look at this. And, and give it a look. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, we can put that in the references, Sophia. Um, so just, uh, I'm sure you've taken a look at it. What are people's kind of first reactions to something like this is helping, again, with that question of, um, you know, kind of signaling that value uh, of OSPOs within an organization? People have thoughts on this? So again, idea here, this could be a project that, a, that an OSPO is engaged in or a project that an OSPO has released as open source. We're just trying to, to identify the adoption of that particular project as coming from an OSPO or as engaged by an OSPO. So would this, would this at least the starting of this help at all? You can see we do have a couple metrics that are, that are already part of this that have been published in chaos. Another that came up in the talk was mentions in the technical pubs and doing some NLP for natural language discovery, um, kind of on things like LinkedIn profiles. So would this be useful in OSPO situations as something to carry forward in a discussion? I think it would be useful. I'm, I'm curious about the metrics. It seems like there's only, I guess, proxy metrics yeah. right now. Um, the proxy being like maybe popularity or PR. Uh, is there a way to pull in like metrics from an SEA tool or something that like that that gets us closer to the usage counts? Or um, we've we've had that. Um, can you maybe maybe yes? Um, Sean, do you have a comment on that? Can you remind me what SCA tool stands for? 
Yeah, uh, software composition analysis tools. Okay. So the things that are imported. Right. Yep. We, yeah, we, so I'll just say briefly that um, Augur does have that data as, as I think you know, but we haven't um, produced a, a visual output for it yet. How do you get that data, Sean? Three ways. Um, we scan uh, a dozen languages for things that are imported. Um, we also use those same scans to calculate a Libya metric, so we know the age. And we run the um, OpenSSF scorecard against those projects. Um, oh, and we, yeah, so those are the things that are, would, would be coming from outside the, the project. Uh, and to some extent, we've, we've used some package managers with varying degrees of success. We often use them to determine the version and the age and the linear calculation. Does it, which is may not be, may not can constitute all of what you mean by SCA. So maybe tell me what we're missing. That sounds right to me. That's exactly what I would be looking for, either in the imports or the manifest files, what a project is pulling in and using yeah. the counts and I, of those. And I would say the incorporation of that comes directly from Indeed's um, request. Sean, could you in here, could you drop some of those, what you had just mentioned? I, you were kind of yep. like three yep. things. Could you yep. just in this metric itself? Yeah, I just tried to type it in the Zoom picture. Let me go to my copy of the notes. Okay. <laughs> and you are right. A lot of these end up being proxy metrics because sometimes we just can't get at the, the absolute exact things that we're trying to get at, um, but just trying to improve that conversation a little bit. All right, any other comments on, on this? All right, so cool. So kind of per the workflow, um, what we'll do is we'll have Sean kind of add what he's adding here in the metric, bring this back okay. to the metric model working group. Project adoption. Right. Yeah, project okay. adoption. Looking in the wrong document. And bring it back here and we'll we'll slowly get these, get these um, developed and meaningful for this group. Uh yeah. Just, just a question. I was curious whether it uh, it should. Uh, I know it's separate metric, but it should take account of the dependence in any way, or it's meant to be totally separate from dependencies. Um, so that's I, a. I, I think these are in my. So we think of these as dependencies, but I think so. I don't know if if. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm if I'm conflating a couple of different things here when I talk about it. So it's stuff got to that. We I'll, I'll bring up the other metric model that we have that has been talked about as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, this one doesn't have dependencies. I thought one did. Um, this is project awareness. And it has a kind of a series of, sorry, I thought this one had dependencies, but it has kind of a, a slightly different take on what we were talking about in adoption. So I'm wondering, part of me is wondering if, if what we're talking about in adoption, what we had just talked about prior and what we have in awareness should be brought together in a metric model. You can kind of see the different metrics that help. So things like would, clones and technical forks. Burstiness is kind of um, activity around a, a project at a particular point in time. So like oftentimes projects have burstiness around um, events. So would any of these be helpful as well in understanding adoption? Organizational diversity, in a way, I could say, okay. could be really relevant for the adoption as well. Okay, just and that would give us that gives what that metric is is giving a sense of the diversity within the project itself. So again, as a proxy of if we have a hundred different uh, organizations involved in the project, that might be a good proxy measure uh, that it's being used by those hundred organizations. Okay. 
Any other comments on this? So if, if we were to bring these two kind of together from an OSPO perspective, and again, I really thought dependencies was in there. <laughs> I'll make sure it's in there, Stefka. But um, from an OSPO perspective, is, is this a helpful conversation? Again, whether it's around adoption or awareness. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, second what it's like in the white matters and the, uh, that it's uh, in a way, um, at least I have uh, come across in conversation with teams that are questioning whether mm -hmm. to continue staff more or uh, the work and how to, um, uh, yeah, how to convince <laughs> uh, also other uh, yeah, senior management on the importance of a project that they want to have metrics around that and it's a kind of, of the, uh, especially if they come from uh, mostly developing uh, internal proprietary code they, they want to have something like okay that's the uh, number of downloads and that's what we are showing that people are using the software and mm -hmm. yeah of course that's, that's not really uh, what we do in open source so I found it really something uh, um, that uh, we as an OSPO can support the team in, in such conversations. Okay, super. Great. So maybe, I think maybe the action item, these really seem quite similar to me sometimes, particularly in the language. I think bringing these two together might be helpful. Kind of what the conversation we had around awareness and the conversation we had around adoption um, and bring this back to the metric model. Do you have a comment, Sophia? Yeah, I was just going to say that you probably are going to end up bringing them together because the adoption are still proxies and a lot of the proxies are also indicative of awareness. So if we were measuring actual usage, then we would distinguish potentially adoption awareness versus adoption. But if our adoption metrics are still based on proxies, then I don't know, I feel like then it's, it's more of a holistic model to look at it all as sort of an awareness to adoption metric because it's all estimates. Mm -hmm. um and they're also like a not to say a bajillion metrics but we have like a lot listed in that blog as well i didn't want to just paste them in as is because that could be <laughs> overwhelming um but a lot of the things that are mentioned here in in either the awareness or the adoption side so we're on the same page with a lot of things as well um okay but that's kind of my initial thought there okay that's kind of where i am too i'll take a look at the blog i mean to be honest with you we had talked about this one in the metric model meeting kind of unknowing that this one existed. So as I was preparing for, for this meeting um, and kind of going through our chaos documentation and what we have in our spreadsheets and our documents, this kind of became aware to me. So, <laughs> so it, it, they were a little disconnected for a while. And I think it's great because this, this meeting here is kind of bringing them together. All right, the, the last one that I wanted to show um, and I, I do think it's a little bit different, was influence. And this is one that has not been released as well, but has been talked about. And so this is trying to understand the influence of say developers within a particular project or the influence of uh, developers within a software ecosystem, those developers potentially working for a company. And so that's what this one is really about. It's not about kind of the awareness or the adoption of a project. It's about how the developers who work in an organization are having an impact within a particular project or a particular ecosystem of projects. Make sense? All right. So you can take, take a look here as to kind of how that influence is being measured. It's through relatively straightforward things like um, issues and merged PRs, for example. So just kind of tracking developers activities in, in this, in the, what you're seeing here is the chaos project. So you can understand um, developers influence within a particular project. It's probably a little easier to look at this document on your own, <laughs> right? It doesn't come across too well. And then this is uh, influence for at an ecosystem level based on, sorry for the scroll, but based on a number of these different metrics here. So here's the dependency stuff, uh, Stefka. 
does this is, would this be helpful in an OSPO conversation, trying to understand the influence that an organization has in a particular project, or the impact perhaps that an organization can have in a particular project, or within an ecosystem? I like this perspective. Yeah. Okay. Other comments? And this one came from the metrics model group as well. So again, just trying to trying to draw forward these things that we talked about last week, which was articulating that uh, that OSPO value and what the OSPO can provide within an organization or reveal within an organization. There are some parts down here um, in these latter pages that uh, are a little out of my reach and maybe more applicable to other folks here on the call. Things like counter cheating. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, feel like I have I have a reaction <laughs> to this whole thing or to what counter cheating is. Oh, I I don't even know what counter cheating is. I was just looking at this concept. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. But it sort of idea of influence by a company, mm -hmm. I guess is how you're looking at it because if yeah. you're looking at like I I feel like how I've been thinking about this has been a bit more flipped. Uh from the perspective of say if you start a project as a company, one of the things I mean we're done this before but we want to track how we are delegating things to the community like how well we're getting the community involved in leadership okay. and influential roles so in a, in a way like we know we're for projects that we launch we're still the majority contributing force behind it but for some projects they actively want to encourage more other other people in the community from other companies from other places to take on more active roles in the project as a way to rate our own maturity and making this a community project because it is incubated as a company project, but as it's released under a foundation, the goal is to make it more community managed. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at sort of how the, our influence level, not as a marker of influence, but of sort of retained ownership and how well we're sort of working with the community or still, because if we're still have high levels of influence in all the things, then we haven't really successfully transitioned this to a community project. So we're kind of looking at us versus other as a way, as a marker of how well we're engaging with the community and actively maturing external contributors into places of leadership and influence. Gotcha. But I, I, I mean, I think that's a perspective of like, what are your goals in the project? If, you're, if your goal is to join a project and become influential in it, then I think this is the right view. If you started a project and you want to hand it off the community, then it's sort of the inverse is, is what I'm getting at. Sure. I could probably track that like in user stories down here as an organization, you know, when you're open sourcing a, a project, you want to, I'll just give up influence at the time. Sophia, would that be organizational diversity then? I mean, it doesn't speak specifically to influence, but it does speak to the number and um, like who is contributing from outsider organizations. I think that touches. I think that's part of it, definitely. Great. Other reactions to this? All right. I guess. Um, well, yeah, yeah. The one other would be sort of the the elephant factor and the not what are we not calling the bus factor i apologize i feel like that that word is still always stuck with me i feel like we had a different name lottery factor <laughs> lottery great i love it um but i feel like those two are also components here because like if you're highly influential and you step away then that's also a marker of risk great um okay so uh, we're kind of approaching the end of this this block. I did want to say that this conversation, I, I'm tra trying to tie these to the goals that we had as well that we specified earlier in the year. So this is a, one of the goals was the development and release of metrics and metrics models that help overcome challenges found in OSPOs. 
Um, so here you go. This is what we're. This is part of what we're working on in this group. Um, I guess one of the the closing questions I have is, even if we combine adoption and awareness, are these metrics models helpful again within an OSPO to help articulate the value of the OSPO? And the answer can be no. I don't. That's completely fine. But if you're talking with with you know senior folks in the organization or folks that are asking you to demonstrate value within an OSPO, would bringing forward the, the data behind these metrics help, or behind these metrics models help? And I can yeah, leave. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I could, yeah, because I have already mentioned that I've had this conversation, I'm having them. And uh, on one hand, I would say, uh, yes, that help. On the other hand, the metric itself doesn't help. <laughs> so it yeah. will be, yeah, OSPO uh, working with the metrics to explain what the metrics mean. And as also mm -hmm. Sophia mentioned, I like this comment that you can interpret both sides of, uh, for example, yeah, you can say, now we have an influence and they say, and now that's the risk because then there is this lottery factor or whatever in case of uh, uh, we couldn't support this project any longer, that will mean that no one else will support it. So all the background around the metrics, so not just the metrics itself, but just kind of helping Cospos uh, work and explain better and educate more uh, okay. companies where that's needed. Um, so I think when it comes to project awareness, the, uh, the the sentiment piece of that I think would be really important for businesses and for OSPO to be collecting and con communicating up to senior management. That's, uh, you know, particularly for the stuff. Um, I was thinking that the user story about, um, you oh, know, okay. the, um, the positively or negatively um, getting gotcha. a lot of attention. Okay. As a, as a measure uh, of sentiment um, for the project itself whether that's like a, a scale of how negative and how positive it's viewed. Thank you. But I wouldn't want to call it awareness. I think that's like a an anti-business term. Well, it sounds like there's a there's kind of a, a step that we need, which is, you know, perhaps running the models within an OSPO. And I'm trying to capture it here, but then how do we transition the findings to step this point mm -hmm. um, to be made applicable in more of a narrative story? Right. No, I get the I get the goal. I just uh I'm and why why it's there. I think if I'm tying it back to the business, particularly our business, um, sentiment is like really important. Great. We do have a metric called project recommendability, I think it is, which is basically like, would you recommend this project to someone else? But I don't know if that would, I mean, it's not 100% what you're saying, Tim, totally, but um, it does touch on that. Because that's really hard to measure. You know, sentiment, of course, is really oh, yeah. hard to measure. No, no, I get it. I understand. <laughs> we've, we've talked about this so much, and it's just like, yeah, you know, these proxy metrics are, you know, what we kind of land on, but I don't know. Uh, I, I understand, like, I spent years in finance, and um, sentiment is, like, a really big factor in, you know, determining the value of any, like, security. So it's a... Uh, it's hard to measure. There's teams of people doing it, and they don't need, always get it right. All right. Thanks for the comments and mm -hmm. uh, the insights. I appreciate it. Probably. We're going to move on. Um, we're going to talk about metrics models and software. So, Sean, I'm going to just kind of lead the way for you here. Is that? Yeah, that's uh, totally awesome. Good way to go. Um, so let me just go back to my Zoom window here. So, um, oh, you, you're sharing. Okay. I'll just share it. I'll can just let, well, can you let me share? Because I've got sure. I've got it up and ready to go. And there's a couple of things I want to bounce back into for. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, you're good. 
All right. So, so this this base this little short presentation and a quick demo of a metrics model kind of follows up on our last meeting where we were trying to facilitate the, facilitate the discussion about how to describe all these ROI metrics that are commonly used and how do we think about metrics models as a way of not being ROI centered but still communicating using language related to ROI and and so with with that in mind what I'd like what I want to do is just like go through one metrics model in the case and sort of show kind of a process that I think might be helpful sort of as a candidate process to be just you know destroyed and discussed um, afterwards. So wait, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, I was on the wrong slide. That's the slide you should have been seeing apparently my Google. So, and these are just some of the small sampling of the OSPOs that we've worked with um, on the Augur project within chaos to build a set of, you know, different metrics and metrics models and make them visible. And so we don't want to talk about like chaos metrics and metrics models help explain OSPOs in the matter in the language, why they matter in the language of strategy and risk management that sort of bridges, I think, this gap between ROI and what does your OSPO do. And I think the return on investment mindsets are kind of, you know, open source software has this central role, I think, in most corporate strategy, but often they're positioned under the CFO role. There's a it's a cost center in a sense. And so OSPO folks, I think, from what I've heard over the years and in these meetings, uh, is that they're often not only having to explain what's happening with the projects, but also explain the nature of open source and how that works and connects to the value proposition in the company. Um, sometimes why it's in an organization. This varies depending how technology centered the mission is. And then working to use OSPOs uh, to sort of as a strategic criticality for some organization's three to five year vision. I think by understanding some of the things that OSPOs can understand, they can end by then explaining things to um, the people in the C-level suites, we can help them understand the strategic criticality of OSPOs because I really think from what I've heard and what I've observed, there is a strategic criticality um for ospo work and so chaos's approach is just we have this we come at this or we talked about this standard language about return on investment and metrics and metrics models can be components of a standard language that we define and expressed to the organization through these specific maps of how strategy risk and roi can be manifest in 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 ospo kinds of visualizations, information, and other types of things. And um, we want to bring easy indicators of the OSPO role into organizational success. So kind of a, what I'm thinking of is a metrics, metrics model, because metrics models are composed of metrics, and then a software pipeline. And it's sort of getting to within chaos and within this working group, okay, we have these things in the OSPO working group, we want to measure, they're important. How do we move them the, then to the software parts of chaos like how do we make that part of a central part of the high priority pipeline for making things available and of course these things need to be easy to use uh, and so the metric model i'm just going to illustrate real briefly here is uh, the metrics model on community activity so it's a pretty simple one that includes data on contributors code changes commits and and these things here the special note about contribution attribution is that in most OSPOs I've worked with, they maintain their own list of who their contributors and their emails and their GitHub identities are. There's not a, people are terrible about stating their affiliations accurately on GitHub and, and use a variety of email addresses. So this, this contribution attribution becomes something I think we want to provide a, a way to help OSPOs maintain their own list. And then uh, change request reviews and issues closed. So those are the things in this particular metric model. And so I'm going to give you a, a couple of quick looks at things. So this would be one related to comments and activities for closed 
pull requests and the red line are the rejected pull requests. So how many comments do they get? And the black are merged pull requests and how many comments they get. These, these comments can be a real interesting signal of, of activity. Um, a second, and then the, the user stories. So if you follow the link at the top there that says metrics model, that's gonna take you to the metrics model page inside of chaos. And then these are the user stories, which I will not read to you that are covered by this metric model. And there are a couple of implementations of significant components of this metrics model that I wanna jump over to now. So the first is, this is an OSS Aspen project, a uh, piece of software that's been developed by Red Hat um, in partnership with Chaos and uh, the Augur project. And so in both examples, I'm showing you RabbitMQ server. And if we remember that we're looking at activity, here we have issues over time. We have those created, uh, those closed, and these are represented in the bar chart. And then the number of issues that have been opened over the life of the project obviously is a progressive climb and depending what you're interested in this particular design can be windowed and anything can be screenshot you can also look at we default to a month but you can use more granular date intervals on this graphs on this graph commits as part of that metrics model uh, again that's a pretty important activity metric and you can see the various commit level levels seems to be pretty steady on this one. I can drag and drop and narrow it here, do that down here and change day, week, month. So you can get real good, quick overviews either by project or if I scroll up, I can search by um, organization on a platform. And I can also assemble groups of repositories that may not share an organization. Um, to get the data. But right now, again, we're just looking at RabbitMQ server. Um, we can see new contributions per month, contributor growth by engagement. So what this, this indicates is our active contributors are down here at the bottom, and this looks pretty stable. Ones that are drifting are ones who've been active for a while, but are starting to be less active. And then not surprisingly, the ones who are away, that are away this of course becomes a cumulative, an accumulative number because when you're away, you've still ultimately contributed at some point. Um, getting to issues and um, staleness is a real concern. You know, how stale are the issues um, that exist? Um, how many are new? How many are moving towards staleness? Same with pull requests. And finally, just looking at pull request activity over time. I'm going to pause and breathe there for a minute to see if there's any questions so far. So Sean, we've talked about in chaos, like providing composite views of a metric model. You know what I mean? So like right now, this is the metric model as represented across these, whatever, six or seven metrics. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to kind of see like a, a, a meta view at the metric model to kind of say things appeared collectively things appear to be trending as such yeah so the what we have on the roadmap for that are um, and we've discussed this with the metrics model working group and the asia pacific working group as well is taking each metric that's a component of a model and letting the consumer of that metric model weight different factors is more or less significant so that you can come up with a like a single indicator that you don't have to scan through a page to get and and that that weighting is um it's it's on the roadmap for auger i suspect it's on the roadmap for grimoire lab and i i think one of the things i'm going to get here to at the very end is um and let me just jump to the very end um, and I can show you more. Um, what am I looking at here? Yeah. So, okay. can, yeah. There, can you see that? It's a little, it's a little softly yeah. colored. But, but the idea, the way that I would like to see this work, and the way it doesn't work now, is we we hear of a need that OSPOs have through this working group. And it's really what does happen is the, the metrics and the metrics models 
that do exist have, have emerged from discussions like this in the ASPA working group. What hasn't happened yet is to consolidate these requests into software requests. So building a metrics model is helpful for developing a common understanding. But what comes through the, the software request is this, okay, we've defined the metrics model, the metrics in it. We also want this consolidated weightable measure for this metrics model. And, and we'd like the software projects, it could be Grimoire Lab, it could be Augur, it could be Bob's new software project in Estonia um, that picks up that measurement of, you know, to present that metric model um, using a, some kind of easily navigable interface where you can look at individual repos or group them. And then for that to be then implemented in a piece of software like Augur. So the, the capturing of the software request, which is, I think, what makes the metric model itself actionable for folks. That's the piece that I'd like, I think that's the piece that I'd like to discuss because then that, you know, as we develop these ideas for how do we communicate in language that is not repulsive to the ROI language, but helpful to communicate wherever my particular OSPO is at, how do we, how do we get that request into software and then implement it in software? and show the progress um, along that path. And I'm just going to, I've, I've got other stuff, but I think we've covered the things I wanted to cover. So I will stop sharing. So is this an internal request at chaos, Sean? Like how do we in the chaos project bring these models forward onto a development roadmap for Augur? So, as an example. so Don, Don Foster and I had a conversation about this yesterday, and, and our idea was we need some kind of, we'd like an issue tracker for software requests, like that emerge from the OSPO groups discussion and, and you know, potentially discussions in other working groups that both Grimoire Lab and Augur would be able to, you know, see and work on and use to incorporate into our roadmap. And we didn't quite sort out the mechanics of what that might look like. Um, but, but I'd like it, we'd like it to be as simple as just opening an issue. Like I want this, I need this kind of indicator in, in my OSPO and, you know, in, I would say, uh, in most cases, 95 or more percent of the data required to build that exists where, where we have, you know, not built it as the front end. And it's, uh, I think these kinds of requests would allow us to put, you know, what do we, what do we build next for a UI? What, do we, what kind of data centered graphics do we build or measures do we build next gives us a priority that's really directed by this working group. So as part of just for people's reference, part of what we're proposing in this working group is to have a liaison who would be part of this group and also help coordinate work within the chaos project Would that person potential, would that be a, a role for that person? You know what I mean? As we have these discussions about models here and then bringing them back to like an issue tracker within chaos that Augur would see. Does that make sense, Sean? Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe the, the, oops, no. Maybe the first question is, does something like this seem useful and make sense? Or did I just talk for 10 minutes and no, I think it's useful. Um, so okay. it's, it's definitely useful in, in a sense that it even addresses one of our 2023 goals, which was okay. to validate metric models. <laughs> yeah. Having them implemented in software is, is that form of validation. So as we have for quests, for example, for say sentiment analysis around one of the metric models that we were talking about earlier, we may come to find that that's really difficult to implement and here's why. Um, so I think it's helpful, definitely in that regard. To me. How do, how do some of our folks living in OSPOs think about it? 
Okay, Alyssa agrees it is helpful. I'll take I'll take Silas for this would be cool now. Just do it. <laughs> I think there's going to be another part of this. The yeah, silence is acceptance. <laughs> Silence can mean whatever you In want. My microphone. Yeah, <laughs> Silence is compliance. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's another part of that too, Sean. I think particularly with the, the folks that are on this call right now is how do you, so if, if we bring oh, these I metrics know. models Sorry. back to the chaos project to be implemented, say in Augur software, how do we make that then available to folks here that may want to take a look at this information? I the way my head, my output decided to become my microphone for no. Yeah, reason. you sound really weird all of a sudden. And yeah, I missed I missed a bunch. All right, let me go back. To well, it's my okay. left ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just it's kind of cool actually. <laughs> so maybe that's something we could talk about next time too, Sean. There were just a few other things I wanted to to bring up. Go right on ahead. Um, but that's super helpful. So thank you. Um, just in the last five minutes that we have, I did just want to bring up um, two last things. So Anna had put in the um, Slack channel that there's going to be an OSPO survey that's being put out. So aligning with one of our goals again. Um, these are potential questions from Anna that could be included in the survey. I'll give you a chance to take a look at those. The, the open question then for folks on this call is, is there a particular burning question that you would have to, to ask OSPOs with respect to metrics or metrics models or health and sustainability? There, and these are all open-ended questions? They could be, I think, yeah. So again, these are just prompt questions from Anna. Mm -hmm. Say so if you click through the link, you can see the answers that they have queued because they're they're not open ended. They have they an idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have a set of responses. Okay. So I, I think I'm assuming the comment is both on the question as well as what's in the response category. Okay. Um, well, if there are responses, it's not a problem. Um, are there any, how about this? Are there any of these questions that are particularly interesting to folks here, irrespective of the open endedness or providing some response? I mean, I, I would be um, interested to see people's responses to one, two, um, uh, four, and four and five. I mean, all yeah, all but all of them would be. All. Yeah, all yeah. So that's helpful. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that is helpful. I mean, what's the what's the how many people generally respond? I don't recall. I don't. I actually don't know what the reach is on the OSPO surveys. At least hundreds, but I think the last ones they've had a pretty wide set of questions, so there's some variability in who answers what. Mm. Why don't I, um, before the next meeting, Alyssa, based on your all five, I'll start to kind of maybe articulate what some potential answers could be to Sophia's point that they're structured a little bit. Yeah. I can share that with the group next time, if that's OK. That's great. All right, All right cool. Uh, for yeah. context, I just shared last year's survey. So this is something that you do the group has been running for a while. So if you want to see what happened in prior years, it's all on GitHub. That's helpful. Thanks. All right. Um, we only have a minute left, so I'm going to move the book project to the next time. I did just want to point out, and I'm glad Sophia and Alyssa are both on right now too. Um, so, but we do have ChaosCon coming up uh, right prior to OSSNA on the 9th. We currently have about 55 people in person and 200 virtual. It's a lot. 
for us. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll do great. Uh, mostly the virtual. We're usually around 50, 50 in person. Um, so join us if you can. Uh, here's uh, just a really brief overview of the agenda. Sophia is going to lead um, one of the discussions. Emma is going to lead another. And then Sean and Georg are going to talk about Augur and Grimoire Lab software. And I think for the remote participants, we've decided to run Run and Stimpy cartoons during the small group outbreak. The small group. What? Outbreaks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> is, there a, is there a limit of in-person sign-up? No, I asked that question. So they assigned the room two weeks prior okay. to, to the event based on the number of people we have. So okay. I think it goes up to 180, which would be a lot. And then lastly, um, also at OSPOCon, so Alyssa and Dawn and Emma and Sophia had a panel discussion accepted. So congrats. That's on Wednesday, May 10th. Um, and there it is right there. I was wondering if if you all would like to do a sample panel here in one of these meetings prior to this this panel, not a panel, but this one. Yeah. <laughs> prior to I mean, May 10th. I mean, I, yeah, no, I like the idea of also about all of us converging and and talking and seeing like what are things to that would be important for each of the people speaking on the panel to, you know, want to bring bring up. Yeah. So, and we haven't done that sort of kind of sync yet. Um, I have an event right before the week before. Okay. So what I'm, I'm would be interested to look at what the, our schedule of meetings look like. So um, maybe. Two yeah. Two weeks from today. So the 20th and that's probably 20th. about it. You know what I mean? Cause then we're going yeah. to get into OSSNA. So it'd be the next one. The four. Because I will, I think I will be. Will you be here on the twentieth? I will be here on the twentieth. Um, however, I'll be um, away on the fourth. Well, how about this? If you all would like to have a, some time yeah. on the agenda to just even, great. even sim, like do the panel, but just like kind of hear the ideas that we plan on bringing forward, just yeah. let me or Don know, and we can okay. definitely on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Sophia, but just thinking about my own. So I, I think that would be great. All right, cool. We're done. Thank you, everybody. Good to see everybody. I think there's things we can carry forward till next next meeting, and we'll see you on the twentieth. And and thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care, Thank everybody. You. Bye. 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 Bye.